Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and jazakumullah khair for staying with us for uh, the continuation of the Ikna Dawa conference. Inshallah to move forward for the next 15 minutes we will have Sheikh Yasi McKenzie talking uh, who is the director of marketing and outreach at Helping Hand. Uh, he is an Al Kawthar Institute instructor providing Islamic leadership to schools and organizations for nearly 15 years. So inshallah you may take the floor. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. <clears throat> Bismillah walhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. First of all, I, I like the theme of this conference, Islam, a solution in time of confusion. And no doubt we're in a time of confusion. Additionally, this topic, which is a quest for a purposeful life, something that we want no matter what time that we're in through looking at the life of Malcolm X. And I want to begin by saying and stating something that many of us know, but I really want us to reflect upon it before we really dig into the topic. And that is that the life of Malcolm X has influenced tens of thousands of people to so his life has been an influential impact or has an influential impact upon tens of thousands, if not more. And these people that he has that he has impacted are both black and white, rich and poor, college educated, as well as high school dropout, those who are or who have had who have been incarcerated or been imprisoned and those who have not, both men and women. So he has touched large, a broad array of people. And surprisingly, you're, 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 you may already, you may know as well, that many people have embraced Islam who have never lived in America because of the life of Malcolm X. So no doubt his life is worthy of us analyzing and I believe he is a role model, especially in this time of ours, we are dealing with, you know, front and center racial racism, systemic racism, problems with education, problems with the health care. And many of the problems then are still the problems that we have now. And I would like to say before moving on also that Malcolm X, uh, and my journey to Islam, he his life played a role on me in uh, Islam as well. And with that being said, this achievement is amazing of his because he, he only lived 39 years. So he lived a purposeful life, a life with uh, that impacted and influenced and influenced tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands or more, yet only living 39 years and losing his father at a very young age, growing up in poverty and losing his mother also at a very young age. She was um, hospitalized due to mental illnesses. And he moved from city to city, going through foster care and foster homes. And he had a very difficult life and it eventually ended up with him serving six mm -hmm. and a half of a 10 year sentence uh, a prison year sentence as well so you look at this someone who had a criminal record someone who um was for all intents and purposes and all uh, for uh, a long period of his life and someone who grew up disadvantaged, yet he lived a purposeful and an influential life. And that, alhamdulillah, should give us a lot of and a lot of inspiration for us because we have much more already at this time in our lives than he had. 
So what I want to do with the 15 minutes that ha that have been talk, what his quest for purposeful life look, or what did he do to distinguish himself? How did he make this great achievement? I'll, I'll only touch upon three things because of the lack of time and a need to be um, brief. So three characteristics, three traits that I think he had that we can have as well that allowed him to achieve this great accomplishment. The first one is he seemed to have had a sincere, and only Allah knows about uh, our sincerity, but he seemed to have had a sincere desire to help society, and especially the oppressed and those who have been dealt with unjustly. So he had this passion to help others. And this is the first, one of the first things that we need to live a purposeful life. As a matter of fact, you, f you find this a theme throughout the Quran and throughout Islam that we should be thriving or striving to provide value to society. The Prophet him, Allah tells him that he was not sent except for rahmatan lil alamin, a mercy to mankind, to the universe. And we, by extension, should be a mercy to the universe. The Prophet him, tells us that the best of us are those who are best, who are best at per, fulfilling the rights of others. The best of us are those who are best to their families. The best of us are those who, had, who are best at providing benefits to society. You see all of these hadith telling us about who are the best deal with how we treat society, each other, one another. So if we truly say that we love the creator, we truly say that we love Allah. And I think all of us, we make that, we should strive to make that claim. But if we do, then it should manifest itself. If we truly love Allah, that love should manifest itself in our love of his creation. So we should honor our fellow human being and we should treat humans with dignity. We should even honor the we're about to uh, encounter the last day. We should still plant a, a, a tree or plant, correct? We were told that a lady was guilty of the sin of prostitution, and, and, and yet she was forgiven for giving a dog water. So this is who we should be, and this seemed to be who he was, a person who really wanted to make the world a better place. So that's what we can learn right now, is not thinking about us and Islamophobia, us and our oppression, but we should think about the world in general. And this is what the Prophet Sallallahu did, and this is what Malcolm X did very well. And the people are hungry for the truth. The people need um, as well as we have a lot to give. I mean, we can give, I mean, we're some of the most educated people here in America and education is a problem here in America. That's good. We are uh, involved in the healthcare center, uh, a healthcare uh, system and access to healthcare is a big problem here. So we can give quite a bit. And we owe quite a bit too for people like Malcolm X and people who uh, were center in the civil rights movement. Many of the Muslims, I'm, I'm, and in particular talking about those created here, we can directly tie, directly, explicitly tie our enjoyment and our pursuit of the American dream to the people like Malcolm X, people like Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, the people like Muhammad Ali, and Muslims in, in, in the past were people who were passionate about making the world a better place. And they were vocal about the oppression. Leads us to injustice, point number two. And that is, not only was he sincere and passionate about helping one another or helping uh, those who need help, but he was courageous. 
and speaking the truth. So he was courageous, and this is something that is somewhat we can really, really learn from his life and from the people like Muhammad Ali as well and the people of the past. It seems nowadays, you know, political correctness, political correctness is a real thing. And not being po politically correct can cause you your job. We see that front and center in the news now. And um, there are consequences for that. But he was courageous to accept the truth, to speak the truth, and to tell himself the truth. So we see that throughout his life that he spoke in, 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 in about injustices, even though politicians and, and the government w weren't very happy. And he paid the, the, the price for that. He, he sp spoke out even against the leadership of his own group, and he paid the, the, the price for that. And Many times he spoke out about himself, saying that, you know, he was a criminal, he was involved in a lot of wrong things, and that Islam led him to the light. Very vocal. And when he was in prison, he mentioned that I, that he needed to. They didn't have good. And he really. Uh, told himself how he fell into racial uh, issues as well, meaning that, you know, um, certain standards of beauty and, and, and this white supremacy that he uh, played into that. You, you, you see, you know, and, and his biography, uh, uh, autobiography and in a movie and other things like he straightened his hair and thought, you know, light skin color. I mean, all these things that, that, that were prevalent and still prevalent today and even Muslims fall into them. Um, he realized this as well and realized that he needs to change. My point is, and I'm, I'm going over this very quickly, that this is not something that is easy to tell yourself the truth, that you need improvement, that you were um, conned and that you were tricked and the wool been pulled up and it's time for you to change. And this is something that he did very well as well. So we said that he was sincere and passionate about helping others. We also mentioned that he was courageous in accepting the truth, speaking the truth, and telling himself the truth. And lastly, he had a vigorous pursuit of knowledge and he spent a lot of his time contemplating and was discipline. So this was too. And as soon as he be embraced Islam, he realized that he had to, you know, learn more. So he uh, familiarized himself with the dictionary. He read more, understood law. And again, one of the things that he mm -hmm. talked about mm -hmm. is that he did not have the ability to uh, arti uh, articulate the problems of the world, the oppression that he see. And this is no doubt a problem that we see now because uh, systemic racism and the problems that we see in the world today are not so avert, uh, 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 so obvious, and so um, they're, they're in, indiscreet nowadays. So this is something that we should pursue as well, meaning vigorously pursue knowledge and contemplation in prison. He had a lot of time to reflect upon himself, to reflect upon the society. This is something that we should do as well. And with this point before concluding, I want to say that many of us are insular. And what I mean by that, that we only hang around our people and really uh, we're in a bubble. And I think there's no um, denying this for the vast majority of Muslims. And many of us do not even understand the problems that are facing the average American. I say that with a heavy heart. And I'm saying that not to, uh, to disparage or to talk ill uh, or about anyone. But again, I'm trying to speak the truth and say this is our problem. Many of us who live in the suburbs, who live, you know, Allah has blessed with being amongst the middle class, upper middle class, rich, the elite, we don't even understand livable uh, uh, wages. We don't understand, I mean, these issues that typical America is feeling. So this is what we need to do as well. We need to be courageous uh, to accept the truth, speak the truth, to tell ourselves the truth, to be vig vigorously pursue knowledge and to be disciplined, uh, contemplate and to sincerely 
uh, be passionate to help uh, others. So in conclusion, looking at the life of Malcolm X indeed reminds us of this theme, and that is that Islam is the solution in time of confusion, and that we can live a purposeful life by what we have today. And one of the, uh, in conclusion, one of the last statement, one of the most famous statements that Malcolm X is known for, and then this is him also accepting the truth, meaning that he realized that he himself was guilty of racism. He said that Islam is the only solution to one of the big problems of America. This is the 1960s, and that was racism. And this, uh, again, is something that we can uh, really benefit from, and we can live a purposeful life, and we can impact many people as well. May Allah grant us success in this world and here and the hereafter, and may Allah have mercy upon Malcolm X and all the previous and uh, Muslims before him. Jazakum Allah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Ameen, ya Allah. Jazakallah khair for your wonderful uh, speech. Jazakallah khair. And inshallah with that we will conclude. Once again you can support us financially by donating at ikna.org slash donate or help uh, volunteer at Embrace, Rice and Gain Peace and other chapters uh, by visiting ikna.org slash barakah. Jazakum Allah khair.